Carbondale Pioneer Days Parade, live Saturday. This is the news station, WNEP 16. Good evening, I'm Karen Hart. Nolan Johannes has the night off. Baseball, it's as American as apple pie, but tonight it's not just for Americans. The world's best Little League baseball players are here in South Williamsport for the 37th annual Little League World Series. The young athletes will be playing ball here all week at the Lamadi Stadium. The first game of the series was played at 2 o'clock this afternoon, and a little bit later, Joe Zone will have all those highlights for you. But right now, as you can see behind me, the second game is underway here in South Williamsport. Two teams, one from Saudi Arabia, is playing Little Leaguers from Japan, hoping to advance in this competition. It's games like this that have drawn tens of thousands of people to this area. In fact, just about every hotel in the Williamsport area is filled to capacity, with fans and tourists from all over the United States, Canada, and even the Far East and Saudi Arabia. Earlier today, the crowd started to file into the Little League Stadium. Over the next few days, these people will spend millions of dollars giving the Williamsport economy a real shot in the arm during the World Series event. In fact, 30,000 tourists are here in the Williamsport area this week just for this Little League World Series. And by week's end, they'll spend about $2 million here. Now, Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens is also live here at the stadium. In fact, right over there, out in left field, you could probably see him. He's by the uh, foul pole. And Craig Stevens talked to some of those tourists earlier today. Craig, what did they have to say? Well, Karen, whether they're buying lunch for the family, getting some souvenirs to take home, or checking into a motel, literally thousands of tourists are in the area this week for the Little League World Series. Typically, Little League Week is Williamsport area's biggest claim to fame, as thousands of tourists spend a lot of money bringing new dollars into the local economy. Meet the Fran Weaver family of New Jersey. They just spent $14 for lunch here in South Williamsport. Visiting Williamsport for the Little League World Series is the only vacation they'll take this year, so they're not worried about blowing a bit of cash. Well, we brought about $500 with us, and that's for food and taking the kids around to see different things, stop in the museum, go to the games. Elsewhere in the area, other businesses are feeling the tourist boom. Jack Powell of Ohio is here on vacation with his family. And I'll probably spend about $900. That includes hotel meals and uh, shopping and so on and so forth. Seems like an awful lot of money. Is it worth it? Certainly. I mean, I'm on vacation. How much do you spend on vacation normally when you go someplace? Although the local Chamber of Commerce says Lycoming County will get $2 million in new money this week, the actual impact of that money is greater. That's because the businesses that rake in the cash will in turn spend it locally. More shoppers, definitely more shoppers, more people in. You know, it's helping the entire town of Williamsport, without a doubt in my mind. I'm relatively new to the town, but there's a lot more people here. Lycoming County is cashing in on all the money tourists are spending this week. There is an added bonus, and that's the worldwide attention that Williamsport receives during Little League Week, attention that many people feel brings tourists here to spend their money all year long. Karen? Okay, thank you, Craig. And you can probably see a lot of people starting to leave the stadium right now. That's because that second game has just ended, and Joe Zone will have a little later on the highlights of that game and who the winner was, so you'll have to stay tuned. How about a little history of the Little League World Series? It was back in 1947 that the first Little League World Series was played. And it was on a baseball field in Williamsport, not here in South Williamsport. Back then, only American teams and boys only were allowed to play. Since that modest beginning, Little League has grown to a worldwide organization. The stadium here in South Williamsport was built back in 1959, built here instead of Williamsport, because the land was donated to Little League by Howard J. Lamadi. The multi-million dollar complex covers 44 acres and today bears the name of Howard Lamotti. And Little League is not just for boys anymore. Girls are now playing the sport, although we know of no girls who are playing in this year's championships games. Now, Newswatch 16 has been covering the Little League World Series for you for years. And it seems as though every year someone says, oh, the Little League World Series should be moved out of Williamsport. Now, this man doesn't want that to happen. He is Creighton Hale, the president of Little League. Now, Mr. Hale, can you tell me why don't you want it moved out and why do some people want it moved out? Well, this decision is a board decision they make annually, but this is the home of Little League Baseball. It's highly unlikely that the board would decide to move it since the games started here in 1959 have continued ever since. There have been many invitations. The one this year is just another of that, of that line. Now, some people say um, Williamsport, the Williamsport area is too small, too rural for such an event like this. What do you say to that? Is it too small? Oh, no. Little League Baseball is a small organization. It was created for neighborhoods of small populations. It operates much better in small towns and metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. So what is the future of Little League? 
the future is very bright. It's all over the world now, and it'll expand, and I think you'll see the World Series stay here in Williamsport. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Hale. That was Creighton Hale, the president of Little League. And News Watch 16 will continue with the rest of the day's news and more from the ballpark here. Stay with us. If you're thinking about buying a new or used car during the month of August, then listen to this. The new and used car dealers from the Wyoming Valley have joined together this year to help us in the fight against muscular dystrophy. These car dealers from all over our area will be donating $10 to MD for each new and used car that's sold this month. So if you're planning to buy a car, do it now, and you'll be helping the children with muscular dystrophy. Byzantine Catholics in northeastern and central Pennsylvania have a new auxiliary bishop tonight. Monsignor Andrew Pidiak ordained today at special services in Scranton's Roman Catholic Cathedral. Newswatch 16's Kathy Bellich was at the service and she spoke to the bishop about his new flock. Hundreds of Catholics, both Byzantine and Roman, packed St. Peter's Cathedral in Scranton to watch Monsignor Andrew Pataki of the Byzantine Rite become Bishop Pataki. Bishop O'Connor and Cardinal Kroll were among them. A native of northeastern Pennsylvania, Bishop Pataki will now return to oversee more than 40 parishes here in the East. His goal? Is to be a good shepherd, to follow the example of Christ himself, who was the shepherd. A Byzantine ceremony at a Roman Catholic church was to be a sign of unity among all Catholics here. But the Byzantine Catholic practices in a very distinct way. Bishop Pataki says the Byzantine Mass calls for full participation. 18-year-old Marianne Stevko of Clark Summit believes Bishop Pataki will strengthen the Byzantine church here. Just knowing that we have a, a bishop closer to us, someone that's going to be working more directly with us, um, I think for the priests and the, the members of the, the parishes, it'll mean that um, they have have someone closer that they can turn to, they, they can feel more of a part of the diocese. Holding the bishop's installation here at St. Peter's Cathedral in Scranton had special significance for many of the Byzantine Catholics who came here today. They're hoping this is a sign of stronger ties between them and the Roman Catholics here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Kathy Bellich, Newswatch 16, Scranton. Well, the weather was certainly beautiful in Scranton today, and it's been beautiful here in South Williamsport for the Little League World Series. Now, Tom Clark is standing down way in left field by the foul pole. You could probably see him over my shoulder. Tom, this is the Howard Lomedy Stadium, I'm told. I finally got that right. Okay, great. And it's uh, a nice-looking stadium tonight. Lots of sunshine. I am deep in left field, just in foul territory. And... Uh, when I got here today, they said they wouldn't let me in if I had any rain in the forecast. So uh, with that, I proceeded to tell them what tomorrow's weather will be like. And they uh, rolled out the red carpet, gave me a free hot dog, and offered me a seat behind home plate. The weather picture continues to look real good right through the middle of this week. Let's check that temperature outside now. We have lots of blue sky over the stadium. We have a reading now of 81 degrees outside, and it feels about 81 degrees. The humidity making it feel uh, a bit comfortable. We have 35%. The wind northwest at 9, bringing the air down from Canada. It is comfortable, and we have a barometer which is now 30.16 inches and uh, holding steady. The high today back in the backyard was 82 degrees. That's about 2 degrees above normal. But that's okay. The low last night was a muggy 66. Records for this date, 95 and 44. That 44 set back in 1973. Let's check Newswatch 16's color satellite picture. Now you can see, I want you to look up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, lots of clear sun-filled air over southeastern Canada and New England. That air mass is moving due south right now, and it will beautify our weather and allow a very comfortable combination of temperature and humidity again tomorrow and for Thursday, as I see it now. Some thunder showers down just south of Pennsylvania, down in the nation's capital, a heavy thunderstorm this afternoon, and some very hot air again this afternoon for the seventh day in a row in the southeast. Temperatures above 100 in many cities. That hot air will stay out of Pennsylvania until about, the, well, Friday afternoon and Saturday. I think then it'll work its way back in. But we have a cool Canadian air mass up there in the right-hand corner of your screen over Canada moving down into Pennsylvania, so we're in good shape. Here's our forecast for tonight. It'll be a moonlit sky tonight. The full moon coming up after sunset tonight and cool. Look at those temperatures. Down into the 50s and most areas uh, across the Channel 16 viewing area tonight. Now for tomorrow. You'll like it. 
Another day with blue sky and cool temperatures, uh, comfortable humidities, lots of sunshine, a perfect day for baseball. Temperatures in the upper 70s in most places, not too far from 80. Again, a very comfortable day. Let's look at the board and go down from the top. A pleasant night tonight, 56 degrees, very comfortable for sleeping. Wednesday, tomorrow, lots of sunshine, 78 Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, uh, here in Williamsport, near 80 for the high tomorrow. Thursday, partly sunny. Should be a dry day on Thursday, about 78 degrees for the high. Friday, the hot air tries to move back in. A thunderstorm is likely, 85 degrees. And Saturday, a hot day with temperatures near 90. And I just want to show the viewing audience tonight that I have some good-looking cousins here, actually second cousins, that live here in Williamsport, Marion and Robbie. And uh, I'm proud of them tonight. Here they are with me. Okay, back to Karen. Well, Tom, I see most of the stadium has cleared out, but at least you have some friends and cousins there with you to keep Absolutely. you company. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom. And Newswatch 16 continues with Joe Zone, who is also here live. The whole team's here. Stay with us. He'll have all the action from today and all the rest of the sports when we come back. I'm Mike Stevens on the Pennsylvania Road for Newswatch 16, and I meet a lot of interesting people. A maker of some interesting gadgets. A very special group of bell ringers. A builder of some very fine furniture. Competitors in a rather unusual contest. Those are just some of the folks I've met so far. I hope you'll join me for a visit with some others on the Pennsylvania Road on Newswatch 16. And we're back here live in South Williamsport for the Little League World Series. And if you just look over my right shoulder, way down there you'll see Joe's own. No action behind you now, Joe, but nope. lots of it earlier today. Tell us about it. Karen, you're right. That second game was one of the fastest games that I can remember here in the history of the Little League World Series. They are all done. Let me tell you what happened. We've played two games. The game just completed a few moments ago. Japan knocked off the team from Saudi Arabia, made up mostly of kids from the United States. Let's take a look at what happened. Just one run was scored in the game, and that happened in the first inning. There was a single, a wild pitch, and then the bunt. Now, the pitcher makes the play on the bunt, throws wildly to first base. That allows the kid from Japan to come all the way around to score, and there it was, the only run of that game. The Japanese pitcher went on to throw a no-hitter, so Japan wins it. The final score of the game just completed a while ago, 1-0 Japan over Saudi Arabia. First game here today, the two American teams in action for the first time. The team from Marietta, Georgia, representing the South, and the team from the Central Division out of Chicago. And let's take a look at the highlights of that game. Early on, it was a fairly sloppy game. A couple of pass balls, wild pitches, pass balls, and Marietta, Georgia had two runs on the board in the first inning. In the second inning, more wild pitches, more pass balls, and that made it a four to nothing game early Georgia leading. And then, finally, the central team went to work. Home run coming up by the catcher over the left field fence. That made it a four to one baseball game. Georgia went on to score three more runs. They scored seven in the game, three on errors, three on pass balls. The final score of that game, Georgia beating the central team seven to two. I've got with me the winning pitcher of that game, young man by the name of Mark Pichotti. Mark, nervousness at all your first time here in Williamsport for the League World Series? Well, I was only nervous right before the game, but once I got on the mound, I just thought to me like all the rest of the game, so just pitch your best. Did it help you at all to have the big lead there early? It was 4 nothing there after the first couple innings. Yes, it did. It helped a whole bunch. And then what happened when you gave up the one home run ball to the uh, catcher for the uh, central team? Well, I just uh, just keep on pitching your best. I'm not going to get any more off you. Okay, what do you look forward to now? You're off Thursday. Would you pitch if uh, you get that far on Saturday? Mm -hmm. Okay, congratulations. Nice Thanks. job here today on a two-hitter. That was Mark Pichota who won the first, first game today as the team from Georgia won in the first game of the Little League World Series, and now they will go to the semifinals. Okay, that's the story here from day one, Japan and Georgia winning. Now, the Phillies, they're out on the West Coast, continuing to have all kinds of problems. They lost four in a row now. They lost last night to, to, Phil to uh, San Francisco, and now they've lost four in a row. They are tied for first place with Pittsburgh. Yankees, too, having all kinds of problems. At least last night they had problems. First loss since the uh, Pine Tar decision. Uh, they went into the 14th inning. They had the tying run thrown out at the plate. They lose that game. The final score was 3-2. to two. 
And so the Yankees are now three and a half games back. Okay, now let's get right into our high school football previews. The Super 16 countdown. There are previews, as we like to call them. Let's take a look at it. Last night, remember, we started off with number 16, the team from Tawanda. Then number 15, the team from Honesdale tonight. Team number 14, Stroudsburg. Tim Carlson has more. The Stroudsburg Mountaineers dropped a few games early last year, then got it all together to post an 8-3 season. Coach Fred Ross feels that inexperience hurt them last season, but that's one thing that Ross doesn't have to worry about this year. We had some good players back, and I believe that if the team has one strong point, it's got to be maturity and experience. The number of returning lettermen, 22 in all, not only makes Ross's job a little easier, it lets the players pick right up from where they left off in the past season. For the most part, we all played last year. Right now, in the beginning of the season, we all know our plays, almost all of us. So it should be a little bit easier for us to go out and perform well in the first couple games. 22 returnees also make it easier for the guy who has to know what each offensive player will or will not do, the quarterback. By now, I know everybody. I know what they can do. Their speed, that makes it a lot easier. The Mountaineers open the season with a pair of non-conference powerhouses in Parkland and Whitehall. Those openers definitely deciding whether or not the Centennial League title will be in Stroudsburg. Tim Carlson, Newswatch 16 Sports. All right, tonight at 11, team number 13. Let's go to the fish forecast. The best time tomorrow. If you're not going to be here, go out fishing 2.30 in the afternoon. All righty, that's it from here. First day of the Little League World Series, Japan and Georgia have won. Karen, that's all of it. Okay, Joe, stay tuned for this one, though, because coming up next on Newswatch 16, the lady of the Little League, Mike Stevens, will have that story when we come back. What is a kickathon? Well, it's the newest, wildest marathon around. KRZFM is sponsoring a kickathon for muscular dystrophy. It all begins at 11 o'clock on Sunday night, September 4th, telethon night at the 109th Armory in Kingston and the Watchers Armory in Scranton. It'll be a 10-hour kicking extravaganza. Sponsor forms can be picked up at KRZFM, WNEP-TV, Scranton Courthouse, and Wilkesbury Courthouse. You must have $10 worth of sponsors to enter. So come on out and kick for Jerry's Kids on telethon night. And finally tonight, the story of one of the fans of the Little League World Series, a lady from Lock Haven who must truly love Little League Baseball because as Newswatch 16's Mike Stevens reports, she's been to almost every one of the Little League games played in the Williamsport area. For 35 years now, Geraldine Stabley has made the Little League World Series her summer vacation. She had an accident back in 1970 but came anyway in a wheelchair. She was in an accident just last Sunday. Today, she is here, ready for another series. They called an ambulance, and I told the ambulance driver that I was going to Little League. And they, while they were taking x-rays at the hospital, I told them there was broken bones. So I had to go to Little League. Geraldine started her love affair with the Little League World Series back when the crowds were smaller when her children, both girls, were a lot younger. Well, I like sports and my girls like sports, and I brought my girls because I knew they'd be interested. And once we came, we were hooked. So we came every year. I used to bring them, and now they bring me. And in all those 35 years, the changes have come. The crowds are bigger, the whole thing a lot better known. Geraldine has seen it all and enjoyed it all. We saw teams come from all over the world. In the beginning, there was just teams from Mexico, and that was about the farthest away, and now they come from all over the world. And there's been a lot of changes in the Little League, and every year it gets more competitive. So if you're at the games this year, look around in Section 4, behind first base, for a little lady 74 years young. She'll be easy enough to spot. She's the woman with the 35-year case of Little League Baseball fever. I'm Mike Stevens, Newswatch 16, on the Pennsylvania Road in South Williamsport. And good evening from South Williamsport. <laughs>